Grant Flanders and Matt Hall of k Online here for 10 after. 10 minutes talking about K-State's latest basketball game right after the Wildcats. Fall 73-65 to to Marquette. Flanders, an exciting game, of course. Good crowd here tonight. Good atmosphere. Ultimately, though, K-State does lose 73-65. to K-State now 5-3 and three on the season. Losers of three of their last four. Tonight's biggest issue really seems to be the three-point line where Marquette shot 12 of 22 yep. against K-State to 7 of 23 from three tonight. Yep. K-State couldn't get it to fall from deep, like you said. And, yeah, quality competition coming in. Marquette, really good shooting team. You saw that. Not just Marcus Howard. You know, he had a, a decent game. He's he can do better. They held him in check. We'll talk about that later. But other guys stepped up for Marquette, uh, like a Jamal Kane who had 17 points yep. and nine boards. And Cardi said after the game, he probably doesn't average that. Sure enough, he probably doesn't. There's no way. And that's just what happened. Uh, K-State focused on Marcus Howard. They stopped him well enough, but he found other guys to, to make it happen. And then, yeah, on the other end, couldn't get it to fall. And also the free throw line was an issue. First half, 5-12. That's not getting done. Second half no. wasn't great either. So a lot of issues missing missing buckets. You referenced Marcus Howard, some of course one of college basketball best best yep. players. He had 40 in a game last week against Davidson, then 51 against USC. Averages over 25 a game this year. Like you said, just 19 tonight, 6 of 16 from the floor, just five trips mm-hmm. to the foul line. He killed K-State at the foul line last year. K-State, of course, loses tonight, but how do you think they did against Marcus Howard? They did They did great against Marcus Howard. They played him exactly how you should. They got him into foul trouble, and they made sure to run him off the line, to do their best there. And I do think that that was probably the one of the better things they did all game was how they held him in check. He could have had a lot more. A lot of his threes were guarded too. He had a few threes that were wide open that he hit and missed a few as well. And all of his all of his shots were rimming out. So he's an amazing player. Yep. K-State did their job on him. So you can't complain about that. It was the other guys that stepped up for Marquette. Offensively for K-State, it was a struggle. They had three players in double figures. McComa Wayne had 11. Xavier Sneed had 11. Cartier Jada had 14. That group, though, Flanders combined to just go 9 of 32 from the floor. Cardi and X combined to go 5 yeah. of 21. So when coming into this year, you know those three had to be really good players for K-State to be good. Offensively tonight, all three of those guys really struggled. Really struggled, yeah. I mean, it's 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 becoming a thing where all the young guys are starting to outshine the, the older guys because the older guys aren't getting it done when they need to, and that's the thing. X really struggled in the first half, didn't uh, score very much, and then second half he tried to get it going. And, and they end up all three in double figures, but like you said, missed shots left and right. And they're trying to take them because they're the guys that need to make them and, and be the leaders on the team offensively and defensively. And it's hard for X because he's a guy that p- puts full effort on both ends of the court and Mac, and Cardi does as well. But those two, especially Mac and X, do it do so well on the defensive end. It makes it hard to score on the offensive end, but they need it if they're going to win games against teams like Marquette. You know, you mentioned playing hard and that kind of stuff. I do want to sneak in a question yeah. about the freshmen, you know, Antonio Gordon, Dejuan Gordon, Montavious Murphy still out tonight. Not incredibly efficient nights, you know, from Dejuan mm-hmm. and Antonio shooting the basketball and offensively too, but Bruce Weber praised them both after the game. Top two guys in the play hard chart. I know you thought they played hard yeah, tonight too. They did, yeah. And Antonio's numbers, like you said, one of five shooting's not great, but yeah, eight boards, five of them offensive. Went into the season knowing he was going to be an offensive rebounder. Didn't think he was going to play much, but he's playing a bunch and he is – getting the boards on the offensive end and Dejuan the same thing yeah you see him he's he's always crashing the boards on the offensive end had a few putbacks uh just a really solid player and it's, it's exciting to, to see though that is something that you can look into the future and say here's a couple of guys that can give you some good minutes and coach said after the game on t- not having Montavious so big defensively yeah. I mean he's a great great player for a freshman and he does what K-State needs on that defensive end so Having him out depth-wise, it's it's hard because Levi Stockard under 10 minutes, which is interesting. One of his better games, though. Yeah, he did play well. He had some really nice minutes tonight for K-State. On every one of these 10 afters, Flynn, I'm going to ask you for your biggest positive, your yep. biggest negative, even after wins, after losses. So biggest positive on a night where K-State loses 73-65, like we said, three losses in the last four mm-hmm. games. What positive do you take from this, if any? Yeah, I, I mean, I would have taken Marcus Howard uh, – holding him in check had they won but since they didn't yeah. win I would I will say the 10 turnovers was a good sign because against a team like Marquette quality competition coach praised their defense as well not turning it over very often is a good sign and they did turn over Marquette 18 times yep. but yeah still not getting the win but so I would say the turnovers but Marcus Howard getting held in check was nice to see 
Yeah, I mean, the turnovers, again, a loss is a loss. We're not going to sit here and go moral victory on you guys but and gals listening. But, but yeah, to turn over just 10 times against probably an underrated defense is yeah. good. Force 18 turnovers, which you expected um, was good. Flip side, though, Flando, other than the loss, what bothered you most tonight? Biggest negative from this <sighs> game. What do you got? Man, I mean, I would say just the fact the seniors – and Cardi couldn't couldn't step yeah. up and make plays. They couldn't be efficient. That's that's the biggest thing. And coach said after the game, he says it all the time, efficiency, dependability. And what's the third one I'm missing? And I, I, as soon as you started talking, I was terrified you were going to ask me because I don't know what they are. I forgot the third yeah. one. He says them all the time. Yeah. I should be able to remember. But they weren't those things. They weren't efficient. They weren't dependable. And those are the things that Cardi, X, and Mac need to be game in, game out. If they're going to win games. And they weren't tonight. And that's the biggest negative I'm going to take away. They need to step it up and be more efficient so they can win some of these big games. Two games coming up for K-State this coming week. Monday night back here in Bradwich against Alabama State, I believe yep, it I is. That's right. They were 1-6 and six before, mm -hmm. well, going into today. I didn't see their results today if they had a game, but they were 1-6. and six. They're not particularly good. Then K-State will play Mississippi State on Saturday in mm -hmm. New Jersey. So simple question, Flando. What does K-State need to do this week to be back on track or get on track for the first yeah. time this year, in your opinion? I guess just keep shooting the ball. I mean, Cardi said after this game, I know I keep bringing up guys mm -hmm. saying stuff after the game, say that they feel confident in practice shooting and stuff's going down. Down, but it's not happening in games, so you got to keep practicing that you, because defense is there. Their defense is still quality. Yeah, 73 points for Marquette, but a lot of good offensive players on this team. So I, I really think they got to go in practice, sit on that free throw line for a long time, sit on that, uh, just taking jumpers for a long time and figure that out, especially the guys that are going to shoot the ball a bunch in X and Cardi because those two need to be the, def the offensive go-to guys. And so I think that's what they got to do in practice. They got to get the win against Alabama State and then try to get a, a marquee win against Mississippi State in New Jersey. Won't be easy, but I mean, this, this K-State team is resilient and we always know non-conference does not tell you the end game for, for the Wildcats. No, absolutely right. I would agree with the same thing. I, I was going to ask you, what does K-State have to do? And I'm glad you didn't say they have to go 1-1 one one. They, you know, or 2-0. and oh, Pardon me, they have yeah. to go 2-0. They need to, you yeah. know, getting yeah. to 8-7-3 get and 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 mm -hmm. apparently with a win over Mississippi State's a lot better than where they are right now. But I agree with you. We don't know what needs to happen yet. The team just needs to get yeah. better, clearly. Um, that's and I think, the point right and now. I th to, just to add, I think eventually when Montavious gets back, that's going to be major, major because – of the lack of depth at that position and Levi Stockard usually not getting it done when he's out there. So it, once Montavious is back, those those uh, three, Mac, Antonio, and Montavious can really be rotated in and out. We do focus, of course, on 10 after, on 10 after, on basketball here yeah. on 10 after, I'm trying to say. But we can't not talk football for a second yeah, here. Of course, Oklahoma wins the Big 12 championship today, beating Baylor. It sure looks, you know, like the Big 12 will probably get two teams mm -hmm. into the New Year's Six, where the Oklahoma in the playoff, and then Baylor perhaps in the Sugar Bowl or, or whatnot. We'll see. So I'm just going to put you on the spot, Flanders. You know, what time is this? 11:30 yep. on Saturday night. I need you to tell me what bowl will K-State play in, and do you want to tell me who the opponent will be too while you're at it? Uh, I mean, I was going to say Al Alamo Bowl. I've heard too much chatter on that, and I mean, and Utah, and I feel like we feel similar. I think I heard you say it not long ago. That that's your prediction, right? I think so too. Yeah. I mean, I think there's still probably I, I would be I would be surprised at this point if it got below the Camping mm -hmm. World Bowl. Um, I, I'd be surprised right now at 1130 on yeah. Saturday night if it wasn't the Alamo. That yep. seems likely to me. But we'll wait and see. You know, we'll probably hear sometime tomorrow between, you know, 2 or 3 o'clock, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, we're going to do a little YouTube live reaction mm -hmm. video. You and I will plan. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll answer some wait. questions on there from people. We'll talk about K-State's bowl opponent. If it's Utah, we'll have to talk about how they have, like, a British sideline reporter and who's God, really, really like good that. that we listened yep. to on the way back from uh, Will Swanson's yep. game in Nebraska. So it'll be a good time. It'll be a lot of fun stuff to talk about tomorrow. We'll come back. Maybe not on the KSO show, but at least on YouTube, at least on KSO Online on the site, and making sure we're talking to you about that. I mean, before we wrap up, we got a few more seconds. To okay. What you think of Baylor and Oklahoma matchup? I mean, I thought it was a better game than I expected. Yeah, I thought it really was. I mean, there's another situation where, you know, I'm probably too big of an Oklahoma homer when it comes to football. I'm not a fan of theirs. I just mm -hmm. think they're a really good program. Uh, again, I thought somewhat similar to the last game. Turnovers really killed them. Yep. You know, it's a game I thought they dominated and could have won by a lot. Ultimately, they did get the win. But a close game. Credit to Baylor. Credit to Zeno, who comes in as a number three quarterback, makes plays. I was impressed with Baylor today, but Oklahoma rightfully the Big 12 champions. I only have like 20 seconds, know, 20 seconds baby. before Let's 10 minutes. Done. So I want to thank 
People State Bank. I want to thank Legacy Insurance. They provide everything we need for any version of the KSO show, whether it's the Sunday show, whether it's 10 after, whether it's just the KSO show. Mm -hmm. But this was 10 after. K-State did lose 73-65 to Marquette, and Grant Flanders does have one thing to say to you. Tell your friends. Signing off, baby.